Hey Galaxy Girls, my name is Easy Breezy and in this video I'm going to be doing a story time on clients that made my job uh, frustrating to say the least and what I did about the certain clients, right? So basically I'm making this video to let you know that all money is not good money, all right? Certain clients will stress you out and they will bring so much confusion and frustration to your life and your career that it'll make you dread waking up and going to your shop or servicing your clients. And sometimes you have to know how to read a client that's going to bring you problems and you have to be willing to let that client go. Now, the way energy works, right? Everything takes up space. There's no empty space. So once you get rid of a client that is maybe a cheap client, a, an entitled client, a client that always complains over nothing or asks for free services or whatever, when you get rid of that client, another client has to take their place. Okay, so getting rid of clients is not necessarily getting rid of your money. It's getting rid of the headache and allowing people that actually make your job easier to flow into your life. So back in the day, I used to be afraid to not service people because I thought that that was me giving up on the client or me not giving a good service or I was afraid that you know, people weren't going to be happy with me or I was going to get like a bad reputation for not texting clients back or not wanting to service them. But that did nothing but overwork me and it burnt me out. And it made me totally unexcited about going to my own salon. And I had so many, I've allowed so many of those clients to occupy my shop, clients that are always late, clients that are always begging me for discounts, but complain like crazy after clients that are just never satisfied. You know, it actually caused me to hate my job. And I stopped doing hair for five years because I, I thought I never wanted to service women again. So coming back into the hair game and taking appointments, I realized that this is my business. I can run this the way I want to, all right? Um, so one thing that I told myself, if I don't want to do this, I don't have to, I don't want to wash hair. I don't want to, not because I hate washing hair, but because I had back surgery when I was in middle school, cause I have scoliosis and my spine is like, <laughs> and when I'm bent over too much, it literally just hurts my back. And I've been feeling this pain since hair school. So it is not a good idea for me to, to wash hair. And I felt like I was forced to wash hair because I'm a stylist. I have to wash hair, right? No, you don't. You don't have to do nothing you don't want to do. And eventually your clients will get with the program. Okay. Um, I don't like, I, I, I'm not going to say I don't like braiding hair, but I would prefer to not braid hair. I would prefer my clients to come braid it. But that's something that I don't mind doing. So I tell my clients that if they arrive braided, then I'll take off $30 off your service. So a lot of clients take advantage of that, you know. Um, they find a way to get their hair braided. So that's one way that I made my life a lot easier. Another way is I do not overbook, period. I don't overbook. I don't like feeling rushed. I don't like feeling anxiety. I don't like feeling like, oh my God, I got to get this girl out on time. She has to go here. She has, a, she has an appointment to go to. Like, I don't want to feel rushed. You know, even though I do work fast, I still don't like to feel rushed. So before when I used to overbook and I used to have four girls in the shop at one time getting sew-ins, that did nothing but bring me anxiety and have me a shop full of angry women. <laughs> okay. So now I do not overbook. I only book two clients a day and they are at least two hours apart. So that makes my job easier. It allows me to um, service my, my current client to my best abilities. I don't rush. I don't feel like, you know, I'm on a time constraint. Um, I, 
I build a better relationship with my clients and I'm able to retain my clients more. And my life is just better, honestly. So, uh, so let's get into the story time. <laughs> so yeah, I said all that to say that you don't have to do anything just because you're a hairstylist. You don't have to do anything. Okay, you can make your own rules and you can say, hey, you know, this is how I do it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And people will get with the program or they'll just find another stylist. Okay. Um, well, one thing that I don't do, though, I'm not going to lie. I don't like overcharge people like $50 if they're late. Like, I don't do stuff like that because I just don't. You know, if my client doesn't show up, I will find something else to do. And if they don't show up to like maybe two appointments in a row, then I'm not going to lie. I probably will stop answering their calls and their text messages. But I don't like put all these hard, scary rules on clients because I just don't feel like it's necessary. Yeah, I just don't. So, OK, so I had a client, right, that was getting a birthday special and the birthday special is if you arrive braided and bring your unit then i will install the wig and style it on you for a hundred dollars and you have to be like your appointment has to be within two days before or after your actual birthday so i require girls to bring their id well show me their id before their appointment so this girl, she booked an appointment and it was three days out from her birthday. So I said, hey, you know, um, the birthday special is only applicable to an appointment that's within two days before or after. And she said, well, I have to go out of town on whatever day. I guess it was like within the time span. And I said, oh, I'm sorry about that. And I canceled her appointment. It was it was no words. There was no words after that. OK, I wasn't going to argue her down. I wasn't going to bend. I wasn't going to fall. I, that, that's not my role, um, mainly because the birthday special is not necessarily a money grab. It's something to build my clientele back up. I've been gone for so long. I am using that as a marketing tool to bring people to me and have me in their stylist arsenal. Right. So, you know, even though I do appreciate all of my clients, I'm not bending rules for a special I'm not doing that so um so she goes okay like maybe like a couple hours later she says okay I can make it at that time I had to cancel my flight I was like okay cool so so then she goes hey I can't get braided how much is it for you to braid if I'm doing a birthday special for a hundred dollars and you have to arrive braided what do you think <laughs> i'm sorry god i don't want to be mean but what do you think i'm going to charge for braids twenty dollars you think that you're going to get a whole install okay my installs at this point in time are 245 you think that you're going to get a wig install for the hundred dollar birthday special and ask me well how much do you charge to braid well, um, if we're doing two forty five minus a hundred, I charge one hundred forty five dollars for braids. <laughs> Realistically, because you have to come braided to get the special. So I was telling her, um, it's going to be full price if you need to get braided. And she was like, oh, you know, OK, well, I'll try, I'll try to find someone to braid my hair. I'm like, OK, cool. And she found it. <laughs> so. <laughs> So at this point, I'm already like, okay, this girl is already like doing too much. She's already kind of like, mm. she's already kind of like arguing me a little bit, but I'm like, I'm just going to give her a chance. So she came to the shop and I did her hair and it was beautiful. And I'm not going to tell y'all what it looked like because I don't want y'all stooping around being like, it was her. So her hair was beautiful. And literally the, within the next two days, she called me and she was like, Hey, my lace is lifting, you know, can I come so you can fix it? And normally I will fix someone's hair for free, but if I can tell this was obviously not my fault, <laughs> I'm going to charge you. I'm going to charge you like maybe $40 to re-glue your lace down, fix your baby hairs or whatever. Like if I can tell that it was your doing, I'm going to charge you a little bit. I'm not going to charge you full price, but I'm going to charge you a little bit. Like, come on now. So she came and her hair was like 
the the hair was all over the place it was like someone was pulling on her ponytail her baby hairs was crazy like the lace was lifting and i'm like did this girl get into a fight <laughs> did she like get into a brawl or did she have like the wildest sex of her life so i'm looking at her hair and i'm like what happened to your hair she's like oh girl you know it's my birthday weekend so i was you know going out every single day and i drink a lot and when i when i drink i sweat a lot <laughs> i was like i was like okay you know so you know if i told her that i would have done the fix for free you know she would have obviously took it but because i made sure that i set a certain boundary first you know just so I can make sure I'm protecting myself and protecting my time. Um, she agreed to that too. So it's like she didn't even fight the price. She was just like, okay, that's another uh, reason I knew that she knew it was her fault. Because there's no way you're going to ask me to do something for free. I charge you for it. And then you say, oh, that's fine. <laughs> so I fixed her hair. And so I was like, okay, you good? You good? Everything good? <laughs> she's like yeah she's like i'm about to go out again tonight because she was like you know my birthday's all week <laughs> i'm like you go girl period period do, do 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 the damn thing so she went out again supposedly that night right again <laughs> and the very next morning she texted my phone and she said, hey, Breezy, my lace is my lace is lifting. You know, can I come to the shop? Can I blah, blah, blah. Actually, no, before this, before this, I think it was like after the first time I met her, she FaceTimed my phone, right? Now, I don't want to, I don't want to be bougie. I'm not, I'm, I'm not above anyone. I'm not trying to be bougie, but why are you FaceTiming me? I'm in the bed. Why are you FaceTiming me? You're not my man. You're not my sister, my mama, my dad. You're not, what, what are you, why are you doing that? Like, at least send me a text. You know what I'm saying? Why are you FaceTiming me? I felt like it was a little bit violating a little bit. And not only because, why are you FaceTiming me? But because I have experience with working with clients that get too comfortable too quick. Okay? Clients, and if you're in the beauty industry, if you have clients, then you know this. Clients that start acting like your friend too quickly, clients that start, you know, joking around with you too quickly or thinking that they can call you at any times, uh, any times of the day and stuff like that, they start to become a headache and it, it, it gets old real quick. Okay. So, um, I didn't answer her FaceTime and I said, Hey, I said, what's up? I texted her back. What's up? She said, where you at? <laughs> she said, where you at right now? Uh, I need my hair fixed. I'm like, bitch. <laughs> Where am I at? What are we talking about here? <laughs> Where am I at? How about can I book an appointment? <laughs> so from that from that interaction, I realized this girl's gonna be a problem. I knew it. She was gonna be a problem. Okay, so fast forward again. Um, she went out um, all week for her birthday. She was drinking and supposedly sweating. And so this is the morning where she texted me. She was like, hey, my lace is lifting again. And I realized at that point, I love this girl. You know, she has good energy. Um, I appreciate her choosing me to do her hair and stuff. But I'm triggered. I'm exhausted. And this is just not worth it. It's not worth it. Um, I sent her back the the thirty five dollars or the thirty five forty dollars that um, she paid me like uh, the night before or the day before to fix her hair, and I said I'm gonna send you back this money. And I said I'm sorry. I said I can't do this. I said I don't I I, I don't feel like dealing with this. Um, I don't want to deal with anything that stress that stresses me out. And I sent her back the money because I was basically um, ending our professional relationship. I had to. Um, I'm not going to let no client stress me out no more. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Um, I did it before. 
it burnt me out as a stylist. It made me unenthused. Um, and I, I can't do it no more. And she sent me a really long message and she was like, you know, oh, I, I don't even remember what it said. Honestly, I didn't read it. And, um, and that was the end. So, uh, another time I had a client that came for my birthday special again and I did her hair and mind you during the whole appointment, we were laughing, we were watching TV, you know, it's always a vibe in my shop. <laughs> so after I've done with her hair, she was like looking in the mirror and she was like, you know, I can see the knots a little bit. And she was like, you know, being real particular and stuff. And I agreed with her, you know, I was like, um, you know, if you want me to, um, um, like next time you get your hair, like maintenance, I'll take some money off and I'll, you know, make sure I bleach the knots a little bit more. Cause I bleached the knots already, but I guess they weren't light enough. So it was like, I guess it wasn't just light enough for her. Right. So I ended up putting a little bit of makeup on it and it looked perfect to me. Like when I was done, it looked perfect, but <clears throat> yeah. So, so after I did her hair, um, she was acting very, very snooty, very, uh, like she just paid top dollar and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I know, I know that if I run a special, you know, I, obviously give the same quality but y'all the way her attitude was set up that was a thousand dollar attitude <laughs> that was a thousand dollar attitude okay i was a little bit i was a little bit taken back but i was you know being nice to her i was being polite you know and i was like uh i'll, I'll fix it i'll do whatever like I'll, i make sure that my clients are totally satisfied before they walk out my chair period no one just walks out my chair unfinished or unhappy you know so i made sure i covered up the knots and i made it look presentable and i think it looked perfect honestly once i was done it looked perfect so you know at first she left and she was mad and i was like yikes you know I guess you can't please everyone. You know, I tried to just charge it to the game. So then a couple of days, I don't know, like, like the next day later, um, next day after, she came back and she was like, hey, can you redo my baby hairs? And, you know, it was her birthday because, you know, she came for the birthday special. So her makeup was done. She was looking real pretty. She just needed her baby hairs redone and she was going out. And she was acting totally satisfied with her hair. She was like, you know, it looks good. You know, I'm happy with it, blah, blah, blah. So I guess she had to like sleep on it, maybe um maybe yeah she had to sleep on it so after I was done with her touch up you know everything was good and I was I was happy I was happy that she was happy so maybe like three okay no at that appointment she asked me so how much are touch-ups and I said well <clears throat> if you need a maintenance then it's gonna be um 150 and you know you come with the wig wash and I'll reapply it and restyle it and whatever and she was like well what if I just need like something like you know glued back down or a baby hair fixed and I told her you know be between like 40 80 dollars you know depending on how much work you need so once again fast forward three weeks later she texted my phone and she goes hey um how much is the touch up again and I was gonna text her 60 right or I think I was gonna, I think I was gonna text her 80 but then I said Zakia I said, hold on, hold on, whoa, slow your brakes, pump the brakes, pump the brakes. I was like, she's texting me three weeks later asking for a touch-up, not a wig maintenance, a touch-up. And I'm like, I wonder what her hair looks like. So I was so close to sending her that price. And then I said, I deleted it. And I said, send me a picture of your hair. Y'all, this wig was off. It was on, but it was off. And I was looking at the photos and I'm like, this is way more than a touch up. This is a whole maintenance. So I was like, first of all, I was so glad that I did that. I was like, yes, 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 boundaries. Yes, boundaries once again. So, so I texted her back and I said, hey, um, well, your hair kind of looks like I need to take the whole wig off and clean the lace off and reapply it. So it'll be a wig maintenance, not a touch up. And she was like, well, um, like something like, well, you told me some, 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 I don't know what she said. And I was like, well, you know, this is a little bit more than a, than a touch up, you know, 
this is like a whole maintenance. <laughs> I was like, this, this, this requires more than just a little dot of glue here, dot of glue there. And she was like, all right, thanks for letting me know. And she never texted me back ever again. And I was so relieved just to have her because number one, her attitude. I didn't, I don't want to deal with no girls with attitudes, period. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with girls that are penny pinchers. I don't want to deal with girls that, that I, I, I don't want to deal with it, period. I don't want to deal with none of that. So I was totally fine with our business relationship being severed. And having those two girls removed out of my clientele, it has done nothing but bring me peace. So I'm making this video to let you know that all money is not good money, okay? And the thing that you have to do to attract a certain type of clientele is you have to have your own rules and boundaries that you don't fold on. If you don't want to do something, don't do it. If you don't want to reduce your price, do not do it for nobody. If you don't want to honor a certain discount for someone, or if you don't want to do something that, you know, was normally against your rules, do not do it. Because before you know it, you're going to have 10 girls that are going by your bent rules. And before you know it, you have 10 girls paying a discount price and not paying your full price and your full price don't even exist. It's like only brand new girls get your get your new price. I mean, your your real price. But all the girls that act like they're your best friend, all the girls that act like they're your most loyal client. Now, all of them are paying discounted prices and you're still doing the same quality of work and you're still taking the same amount of time. So don't let girls act like they're your best friend. Do not let girls call you at any times of the day, any times of the day, FaceTiming you, where are you at girl? Can I pull up on you? Can I pull up at your house? Can you fix my hair? Can you do my lashes? Can you? No, 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 we're not doing that. No, no. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, protect your peace ladies, <laughs> okay? Protect your peace and just remember that, you know, don't be scared to let go of things because you're not actually losing. You're just making room for something better. All right. And I will not let clients stress me out anymore. And I know a trouble client when I see one. Every time a client asks you for a discount and it's the first time they're booking with you, they're going to be trouble. Okay. If they're already asking you for discounts that you haven't already promoted, or like, let's say, not saying that, you know, um, they say, well, do you have any discounts? Or do you have any specials? That's something different. But if you have a price, you know, they know what the price is. Um, let's say they actually do. Well, do you have any discounts? Um, or specials right now, uh, yeah, I have this, blah, 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 you can do this. If they try to continuously bend that rule, and well, what if I do this? Or can you do this if I blah, blah, blah? Or can you take off, blah, blah? Like, if, if, if it's too much to even get them in your chair, they're going to be trouble. All right? Um, if you have clients that come for a discounted service, Maybe they come for a special, like my birthday special. If they come for a special and they complain the day of, the day after, and a month later, they just cannot stop complaining, they're trouble. They're going to do nothing but complain for the entire duration of y'all's relationship. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not just saying this because, oh, I've been through this one or two times. I've experienced this at least like 20 times. And the signs are consistent. Like every time I break my rule and I give a client a discount that is not a real discount just because I'm trying to go with her budget and stuff, she ends up being a problem. Every time I try to satisfy a client that has nothing but complaints because she can't maintain her hair and she's trying to make it seem like her frontal lifting after three weeks is my fault, it's like, girl... These girls are always a problem. 
and they don't stop being a problem. Okay. So if you have any stories, if you're a service provider and you have any stories like this, let me know in the comments below. And if you are not subscribed to my channel already, make sure you go ahead and do that. Turn on your notifications and I'll see y'all in the next video.